Welcome scholars, autodidacts, and curious people. Welcome to the Ultima Book of Ruth. When I was 13, I was allowed to join the teen Sunday school class, which was led by the pastor of our fundamentalist church. I was surprised to learn that he had very little idea about how to actually pronounce many of the names in the Christian Bible, but I also quickly learned he got testy when I asked him questions or gave answers that were not what he wanted. For instance, he once told us about how the Romans killed Christians for simply being Christians, a concept I accepted without question at the time, unfortunately. However, he got peeved when he asked me what I would do if I had lived in ancient Rome if someone had asked me if I was a Christian, because I told him I would lie and say I was not. I will not easily forget his expression of anger, frustration, and outright shock that I would dare to utter such an unchristian idea. His response was that lying is a sin. His anger grew then when I reminded him that he himself had recently preached that lying for a good cause was a forgivable sin. His response was to ask if I had read the entire Bible, cover to cover to which I had to admit I had not. He strongly suggested I do so, or that my soul would rot in hell. One thing this process taught me was that men who hold positions of power tend to hate being questioned, and especially hate having their own words thrown back at them. When I was in my mid-twenties, I read this book, when God Was a Woman, by Merlin Stone, while simultaneously reading the passages in the Bible to which Stone refers. I had learned much about literary analysis from earning two degrees in English by that time, and I was already leaning toward not believing in Christianity anymore when I read the book. Realized that way back when I was 13, I took our pastor's suggestion to heart and did read the Bible from cover to cover. To better grasp the antique language in which the Bible is written, I used a set of beautifully bound books that were the Bible written for children, which my mother had bought me, bought for me at a yard sale to read along with the red leather bound Bible my parents bought for me when I was younger. However, all that reading the Bible at age 13 did for me was to make me ask even more questions, because I noted so many of the contradictions embedded in the Bible. In many ways, that 13-year-old moment in my life was the catalyst that began my search for the truth about the religion in which I was raised. But it was also the catalyst that led me to the research I continue to do today. But it was the book, When God Was a Woman, that took that search to a whole new level for me, which is why I begin this booktube series with it. I also begin this booktube series with When God Was a Woman because no matter which patriarchal religion you grew up with, one important step in awakening your feminist understanding of the world is to realize how much of an impact the Abrahamic religions in particular have had on the oppression of women and of men for the last 1700 years at least. To begin with, realize that Merlin Stone did her research well, especially for the time in which she wrote the book, which was 1976. We know a lot more detail about the times and cultures she discusses in the book now, especially ancient Samaria. Stone, who has largely been ignored or dismissed by most scholars, was immediately met with scorn and criticism for this book in particular, largely because she dared to point out that Christian scholars carry biases into their research with them, so that they end up misrepresenting other cultures' religions, but also color their findings through an androcentric, or males as superior, perspective. Stone was one of the first scholars to point out that an androcentric bias carried into scholarship will often see women's sexuality and any symbol representing women's menstruation or sexual acts as fertility, 
symbols. And that was, in her words, a gross oversimplification, oversimplification of a complex theological structure. A revolutionary thinker, in a revolutionary time, Stone dared to ask if scholars were judging ancient women and goddesses by the fragile, willowy ideas of today's Western fashions. Indeed, as I have proven in my own research, androcentric bias has overlooked the fact that humanity did not discover the connection between heterosexual intercourse and procreation until around 2400 BCE, or before the Common Era, well after human beings were learning to write, which fully calls into question the idea that men knew they were fathers of children. How can there be a patriarchy without fatherhood, biological fatherhood especially? While, when God was a woman makes many inroads into peeling away the androcentric bias many scholars still project on other cultures and other times, Stone does miss an important point about circumcision. Just to give one example, she claims the practice, which she notes is unusually emphasized in the Bible, which tends to gloss over details about bodily functions, might have been a way to emphasize the maleness of the male worshiping Hebrews. But she misses the obviously sympathetic magic that males who mutilate their genitalia are enacting. They are attempting to prove that males too can bleed for a time in that area of the body, just like women do monthly, without dying. So are taking on female magic as they worship this male deity. In fact, other androcentric cultures, like the Aztecs and the Maya, for example, will also adopt various forms of male genitalia mutilation exactly for that same reason. While Stone's primary purpose in writing, When God Was a Woman, seems to have been to argue for a mother-goddess religious perspective that preceded any patriarchal goddess-creator belief system, the primary importance for reading her book now is to gain some accurate historical perspective on the formation of the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Religions which still seek to constrain women's rights, including restraining their sexuality, our sexuality, as well as limiting our access to education and to other religions. We have to know where we come from in order to understand the influences on our lives, on our beliefs, and on our perspectives of others. So, as a companion, read to uh, the book, God, When God Was a Woman. I also recommend William Deaver's Did God Have a Wife? Because his work as a Christian archeologist corroborates much of what Stone says in When God Was a Woman. So if you truly want to understand the sexism that surrounds us still, I recommend you read Merlin Stone's When God Was a Woman verifying her claims by also reading the Christian Bible at the same time or by reading Deaver's Did God Have a Wife? But I will also provide a link below to Deaver's video of the same title, which you might find very informative. In the meantime, if you have particular books that help us better understand feminism that you would like to recommend, please list them in the comments below. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Book of Ruth's booktube channel. Be sure to like and subscribe.